Doodle Bud here with a pen showcase. We have eight pens in all count them, but what is the common thread? Why do I have these out? These are all flex pens and they're all from different prices. I did a video a number of years ago, turned out to be kind of popular, called it my Friday Flex Off, where I compared a Noodler's Ahab Fountain Pen Revolution pen and then also the Pilot 912 with the FA nib, that's a super flexi nib, it was quite popular. But since then, I got a bunch of other pens here and they're all flexi. So I thought we'd go through, compare, show you what they're all about. And at the end of it, I'm going to choose one pen. If I could only have one flex pen, which would it be? I'll let you know by the end of the video and we'll talk some more. Stay tuned. Let's get to it. Starting off the list here, we have this Jinhao X. 450. You can get these and put what's called a Zebra G calligraphy nib on them. Now this was actually sent to me by a viewer a while ago um, and this is a special one. Came from the UK from Derek Davis. He uh, He's a subscriber. He comments on the channel so he sent this over to me. I wanted to use it but when I got it I guess he forgot he left it kind of inked and uh, for quite some time and everything was all gooed up and, and actually corroded so I, uh, I forgot to, to kind of get to the cleaning. I cleaned it took it apart, but then I had a lot of trouble actually getting the pen to work. So this is a popular thing I've seen is where you get a Jinhao pen and I guess maybe they do some modifications and then you put a Zebra G nib onto it. I I've, I've haven't heard the best results from that. And so I got this thing back together, cleaned it all out. It needed a lot of ultrasonic cleaning. The feed was all kind of gooed up. I even opened it up just a touch to promote flow. But here's inlays the problem. What we have here is a giant gap between the nib and the feed. All that space. This sucker should be down, you know, nice and tight and snug to get the proper ink flow going on. So I've been uh, playing with this adjustment. And that's one thing with these is the fitment is so tight. You got to just cram that in there. I put it in there as, as good as I could, even with a grippy thing wrapped around there. And it's it's, it's just not fitting quite well. So... I can't even demo this pen to use it um, just because as soon as you put ink in it, it all just falls out of there and, and it's not even, uh, you know, able to write and hold ink in the converter and even test the pen. So this is one option that's out there. I know this 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 is worse than uh, what other people have had uh, by, by far. You can at least get them to write, but I haven't seen the, the best results from those. And maybe you have to do a lot of tinkering, but just taking a Jinhao, fitting it with the Zebra G nib, um, yeah, I, I, if you spend a few more dollars than that, you can actually get a surprisingly good pen. And that pen would be the Noodler's Ahab, the also popular first sort of entry to, to flex pens for a lot of folks. I'm not going to do full review on the pen. I've done one before. You can find a bunch of others. We're going to talk about kind of flexing. What's different uh, since I last did my video on this with the comparison is now it has a different nib. This is actually untipped. There's no tipping on this nib whatsoever so you get even greater line variation that's kind of cool you can buy extra nibs for these are pretty reasonable price and this is the feed that i did a serious hack job on went a little too aggressive but you can see the ink is just dying to flow so we're going to show that pen how it compares as well um, and that's another neat thing even if you mess up the feed when you do an adjustment i think these are only about five bucks when you go to order something like that, um, you can pick up an extra feed. You can have a nib. This is one that I actually, I ground one to a cursive italic flex because I want to try playing around with that. So that's one cool thing with the Ahab. It is a tinkerer's pen. Don't expect it to be perfect out of the box. If you got one, go buy a lottery ticket because that was very rare. But if you're willing to tinker and play around, uh, this is a pretty fun pen. So I couldn't fire this one up, but let's just do our first writing sample. I'm going to do the same sample for all the pens, try to keep it consistent. Then we'll, you know, do a comparison uh, at the end. But to break the video up, we'll talk about the pens, do a writing sample and continue on. Next pen we're going to talk about, this is from Fountain Pen Revolution. This is the Himalaya. It's been so long I can't remember if this is version 1 or version 2. And I know they do a bunch of updates all the time and some improvements. So this one uh, I've had for a number of years now. This has the Ultra Flex steel nib as well. So we'll get to this one. It's a you know basic uh, ebonite made pen. 
The one challenge I found with this one, and I think there have been improvements, is the ink had a tendency to stick to the uh, plunger here, the converter that, that we're using on this sort of like a piston filler in a sense with a uh, converter into one. So this ink system's fine and all that, but it does tend, I found just to really stick to that side and that would starve ink flow sometimes. But again, a bit of a pen you can tinker with, but for the price point, uh, this thing's got a ton of flex and works really well. I got uh, Diamine writer's blood in this pen right now to really help promote the flow. So let's do the writing sample as well. If you're wondering, by the way, this is part of the calligraphy set I got from Tom's studio. So I'm just sort of using this as a guide, as a bit of a reference, and I freehand it. So I'll go through to a writing sample for each pen, uh, as you can see what I'm going to do here. up comes from us from Osprey pens. This is the Osprey Milano in uh, Red Jasper. This pen was sent to me to review uh, by Osprey. And actually, it was kind of cool. I think that might have been the first pen that was sent to me to review or something like that. And they also, or actually was my first discount code, which is still active, 10% off on their website if you enter in the Doodle Bud. Uh, I believe that's the one. Anyways, the link will be in the description. But they sent this one to me. And what was really cool is this pen kind of goes along with the one pen many nibs sort of thing I like to do. So you can just have it as a regular fountain pen. And what's really cool as well, they have uh, many different uh, pens at price points. I think there's about three, maybe four pens or something like that, where there's an entry level, mid range, and this is their top end, which still isn't crazy over the top expensive. And you can do all this nib swapping as well. But what you can do is you can take it from a regular pen. I think this just has like a yeah fine nib that's on there. Then they also have uh, some various level of flex nib options. So this is a, five, a size 5.5 nib, which is interesting. And um, it has a medium flex nib on there. I don't know if we can get some focus, but it's just got an M for a medium flex. So there's a whole range. I think they carry a lot of the similar ones from Fountain Pen Revolution, but then they also, also have a whole range of other nibs, even like I think some zoom nibs or music nibs, just all sorts of really cool nibs. And one of them is that Zebra G combo. So what's really unique with this one is they have their own custom Ebonite feed that they made. And you now you can see there's no gap. Now I do have some bad news. Just before I went to film this, I was arranging things. I dropped this section on the floor. That didn't do it in. But then when I went to look for it, I rolled my chair back and I rolled over that and I snapped off the corner. So unfortunately, I can't do the same writing sample with the Zebra G nib unit that they have. So I will use their 5.5 medium nib for the writing sample. But what I'll do, I'll splice in some other footage from a, a previous video I did, just so you can see, because this thing's really good. I, I think they've kind of mastered that fitting a Zebra G nib to a fountain pen and using fountain pen inks and doing, you know, with a proper calligraphy nib. This wouldn't be something you use for journaling and note taking all the time. This is for really practicing proper calligraphy. But you can take it with you on the go, which is really nice as well. Again, one thing to keep in mind with Zebra G nibs is they are like they do corrode. This has a, a coating on it, but you can't just leave it in the pen ink for a few weeks and come back to it. You do get corrosion on it as well. So that's one of the uh, things you keep in mind uh, when using these Zebra G nibs. But I'll splice in some footage and then I'll go ahead and complete the writing sample with this nib unit here. Next on the list is the R615 that comes to us from The Good Blue. So this pen was also sent to me for review. This is when uh, they were just getting on the marketplace. So this was kind of cool that this just came out. And uh, so this was the unfinished aluminum pen. So there's no coating, no finishing on it here as well. Um, since my original review, uh, there's a few different nib options as well. What I have on this one right now is the untipped as well. So it says calligraphy on there, as you can see. So I thought just to show maximum line variation possibility, 
let's go with the untipped nib that's on here. Uh, the other ones that you can have, you can, it's a similar type of thing. They are number six size nibs, but you can have sort of a, a medium flex and also just have this as a regular to go uh, pen as well, just a, a regular nib too. One cool feature, you saw that nib there, really, that's sort of that feed and it's bright green. Well, that's because it's a 3D printed polymer feed, custom one that they do, which is really great. This thing has lots of flow. I haven't had any issues with this hard starting, uh, like kind of skipping, railroading too much. If you go too fast, obviously you're gonna, that's gonna happen. But for proper speed and everything else, this feed works quite well. It's white when you get it, and then it takes on whatever ink color you put in there. So obviously I got some green ink in here right now. So let's do a writing sample on this one uh, to finish this part off. And at the end, we'll, I'll talk all about the different experiences with these pens, but let's get writing with this. We're talking a pretty serious pen here. This is the Pilot Custom 912 with the FA nib. And yes, I left the sticker on it just because I felt like it. This pen here has a pretty notorious nib. A lot of people know about this sucker. This is, you know, we're hoping to have a vintage-like flex nib on a modern day pen. So this is Pilot's attempt at that. It's pretty darn good. Uh, the pen writes wonderfully if you scrap the stock feed and get an aftermarket feed, which is annoying for a pen of this price point. Now, there's long discussion change on bulletin boards or reddits or on the fountain pen network threads that uh, what's well, our writing style versus their writing style. The feed's just fine for that, blah, 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 whatever. If you want to get some serious flex out of this pen, um, this, the stock feed just won't do the you know it just won't keep up versus you you spend a few bucks and get this custom ebonite feed there's a two slit and three slit option this is the three slit so this thing uh you know can throw down some serious flex and now some serious ink and the ink i'm using because it's the pilot i haven't used this for a while but it's the Yoroshizuku kompeki and i'll say another controversial thing here if possible in the fountain pen community uh for me this is like a meh ink it's okay it's a pretty blue, but everyone's kind of almost reveres this ink as like the best ink you can possibly have. If you do flex, this is the one to use. For me, it's a, a nothing burger. There's plenty of other inks I like and prefer way more than Compeki. So I think it's like a sort of so-so okay ink, but not, uh, not any of my favorites at all. But I put it in here, Pilot Pen, Pilot Ink, let's do it. First vintage pen I have here is my little Pelican 140. This was in my top three pens that I did for the Apple Boom top three pens. That was kind of cool to do. I think it probably might still be in my top three pens. Now this is a nice flexi nib. This is by no means a like, you know, Waterman's super wet noodle pen that you can get. Those gorgeous nibs that just are crazy flexi. This is not that, but for everyday writing, this is a lovely little pen that you can use all on its own. But if you want to get some flex on, not go overboard, this is a great pen. So let's get writing with it so we can get the writing sample and compare. Rounding out the pack is this vintage OMAS 556F. The F stands for faceted. So uh, this was a bit of a large purchase for me. This was the most I've ever paid for a pen. I have some that are worth more than this, but I paid less because I got a really good deal. This was the most coin I have dropped on a pen yet. So anyways, we're going to do a quick writing sample with it here, just like the others. has a lovely flexible nib. Uh, the thing performs really well. Like, I don't know. I don't think it's ever railroaded maybe once or twice if I was going too fast. So really performs well. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this one forever. There's just something about it where I'm not just head over heels in love with the pen, despite the fact it works fantastic. Maybe it will be, maybe it won't, but uh, let's lay down a writing sample just in case I do get rid of it one day.
Two last pens I'm going to do real quick here is one, this is my Visconti Homo Sapiens that sort of came back from the dead. I got the nib reground by Mark Bacchus, so now it's sort of like a fine, extra fine, but this is not a flex nib at all. This is what we call like a bouncy sort of soft springy nib. So I'll show you what that looks like just as a comparison. And then we have a vintage version of the same type of thing. This is a little bit more bouncy. I wouldn't really quite call this flex, but it's got some softness to it, a nice bounce to it as well. This is an Aurora 88 and a lovely little pen. The cap on mine is quite loose. So, uh, I don't take it out of the house very often, but it's a lovely looking pen and a nice writer as well. So let's just finish off with that writing sample. Then I'll give you closing thoughts and we'll compare them. Now, first up I wrote with was that Newler's Ahab. Now it has that untipped nib and you can see the difference it makes those thin cross strokes to give that sort of maximum line variation. It is quite smooth for an untipped nib, so I'll give it that. So it's quite, uh, it's quite nice. You can use this almost as a daily writer. It's, you know, it is gritty, but for untipped, very good. But you do have to put some force onto it. It's no wet noodle where you just barely touch it and the tines separate. It is steel, so you do have to put some pressure on it. After that, here we got the Fountain Pen Revolution Ultra Flex nib that I got on there. Now, I did another writing sample after this because this wasn't fair. This isn't, uh, well, this, this is paper that came from the kit that I got from Tom Studio. And the, the Fountain Pen ink is a little bit different than the proper calligraphy ink. So, and this is also writer's blood, which is unnecessarily wet. You, you just, you don't need an ink that wet so on this paper that can handle anything it's it is actually bleeding a little bit on there so to be fair i took out some rhodia paper and started writing and i was even writing too small you can still see it's almost bleeding on the rhodia as well so i started writing really big and this thing just keeps up like crazy then i hit this mega fast after doing all that and it finally railroaded barely but then it recovered so it's got a, a feed that works quite well you might i've heard some people say they have to tinker with theirs to help it keep up maybe open the channel a touch but if you have flow issues uh diamine writer's blood will solve those and it's just it's crazy what as well so did that extra writing sample because i had that this first one it was just it was just too much saturation for this paper to handle. Next on the line, this is the Osprey pen. So this is just their, their medium flex nib. The, the sample I also showed was with the untipped nib, the proper calligraphy Zebra G nib. So this pen's really cool. The fact that you can, you know, do the one pen many nibs thing, and this is their most expensive one. There's mid-range pens that you can do the same thing with too. So there is a lot of options for a pen at this price point whether it's this one or the, the less uh, expensive ones as well. And even for just a regular go about, you know, medium flex nib, you can just have this as a regular medium nib that you write with, but give some good flex. You're getting really nice performance, good line variation. I haven't had this pen really skip at all. It's kept up because it's got a really nice feed as well. So I think this is a brand that's sort of under the radar a little bit, but they got some great offerings. Then we got the Good Blue that has the untipped nib similar to that on the uh, Noodler's Ahab. I'm just looking for the pen. There we go. This untipped nib, this calligraphy one, you get great line variation as well, but it is a little more scratchy than the one on the Ahab. But this is, you know, again, like a calligraphy style nib. The feed keeps up. Uh, you can see no problems there, almost a little bit too much flow for this paper. So, you know, on proper paper, you're not gonna have that feathering as well. But again, I've done a bunch of writing with this one. I've had tons of line variation with it. Works quite well. That custom feed is neat. Um, one little thing I've noticed as well, is this is the raw version. So you can see it is very tricky to have this triple flat line up. And over time, there is a little bit of creep. You can see, so it's not lining up quite perfect. If you are getting one, I don't know if he sells the uh, raw version anymore, but definitely go for anodized because that will have a harder finish on the inside. And this is brass here. He has some with uh, stainless, but the brass does sort of wear into the raw aluminum over time. But if you have an anodized one, a coated one, that's going to really, I think, minimize that possibly altogether or at least a lot less as well. Just a little tip there if you decide to pick one of those up at some point for yourself.
The Pilot 912 held up just fine. Lots of line variation. Uh, very soft for flexing. So this nib is, you know, quite light pressure. You get lots of flex with it. It is disappointing. The flow is an issue out of the box, but you can fix it with the aftermarket feed. It's uh, quite light. It's comfortable. It's a Pilot, so it's well made. No issues now that I have a new feed in there. So good line variation, very soft rider, good to use. Not as much line variation as when you go, you know, with an untipped nib, but pretty darn good. But also, you know, reasonably expensive pen. So I can see this would be out of the price point for some folks um, because it does fetch a pretty, pretty good coin. But you are getting a good pen in return. And then we got one of my absolute favorites is my little Pelican 140. So that pen, I just absolutely love it. I think it, it you know, it, it looks pretty good. It's not perfect. The, the cap sort of comes undone on its own every now and then. Just lightly, it's sort of strange. But this is, for me, a very natural writer. You have great level of flex. It's not as much as the others. It's not over the top. But I find it's just such an easy pen to write with. This is probably, for me, the most natural uh, kind of flexy pen to write with. Because it's not too much flex. It's You could just throw it down with some regular writing if you wanted to and not go over the top. And then even with your printing, you get cool effects. So great pen all around. And wrapping it up is the OMAS 556. So similar, I think a little bit more flex on this OMAS, but similar type of uh, option as far as line variation as well. The pen performs really well. Um, people don't want to post their vintage pens. This is quite short, so I sort of want to, but the posting doesn't quite hold super well. So it is a little bit of a small pen for me to work with, but the flow is fantastic. It keeps up quite well. But the nib also I find for this one is a little bit gritty. Um, I kind of want to micro mesh it, but I'm not sure if I should or if I shouldn't. I have I won't mess it up. I've I have total confidence in that. Um, but I'm debating if I should smooth it out a little bit or just leave it as it is because maybe that's something with Omas Flex nibs. That's a trademark that they have. So I'm still debating if I should do that or not. Maybe in the comments, let me know what you think of on on that option. And the last couple of pens I featured were sort of under the soft or bouncy nib category, this vintage Aurora 88. Gorgeous pen, super classy looking, very comfortable to write with. Mine is mega wet. I think there might be a seal in here that's leaking because it is mega gushing pen. Uh, just too much for my likings, but nonetheless has some nice line variation. I wouldn't press on it hard very often all day long just maybe something special if you're doing a title on, on some notes or something do that or your signature or something special you want to do but I wouldn't push it too hard all day long same goes for this thing here this is not a flex pen but with that um, you know kind of extra fine nib grind that was done by Mark Bacchus and he did an amazing job on this pen you can get a nice little line variation I, you know again that is the max I would ever do on this pen, and not even for that very long. Same sort of thing, just every now and then you can throw that in. But with more natural writing, you can see here just with some printing, you can get some nice little line variation. That's more sort of just to give your writing a flare, not go too crazy, but it's got a nice softness to it. And he did a spectacular job. This is exactly what I was hoping for with this pen. So um, this, you know, if I were to redo my top three pens right now, I think this would definitely be in there. It's just great pen. Um, also, I was debating about getting a new Santini pen versus the Omos, but I thought, wait a second, I have a gorgeous Italian pen already. It's just, it's got some nib issues. So spent 50 bucks or whatever it was, or 70 bucks instead of $700, got the nib tuned up and I couldn't be any more happy. So earlier in the video, I said I would tell you if I could only choose one pen, which, which would it be for flexing? Let's get these two out of the way because they're not true flex pens. So now we're down to what we got in front of you here. Uh, automatic disqualification, for this one just because it didn't work so that's out of the that's out of the mix well it probably didn't surprise you it's going to be my little vintage pelican 140 i just adore this pen it's uh you know it's small so it's kind of out of the pen size i typically go for it's quite narrow as well but when you get it in there post it it fits perfectly in my hand and i i'm, I'm very accustomed to the size now as well and it's just a natural writer the pen has great flow. The other day, actually, it started skipping on me, and then I was like, oh my gosh, what happened? It was out of ink. That's it. If it's got ink in it, it'll write. If it doesn't have ink, then it won't write. That's the only time it will not write is without ink. So I love that about the pen. It's quite smooth nib. 
And I just, it's very intuitive, at least for the way I write. So this would be the one and only, if I can only have one flex pen from all the pens I have right now and never buy another flex pen, this would be the one here. On the budget conscious side, you know, these are, are, are quite expensive. So let's eliminate that. This is up there a little bit too, but let's, you know, let's try to keep it the, under that hundred dollar range. If you're getting into flex, um, what would I go through out of here? So, um, this is the most expensive off offering from Osprey pens, but you got some mid price range pens. They have a can't remember if it's the scholar or the student or something, some of the names they give it. I'll have a link in the description there, but they have one that you can do uh, all the nib options with as well. So I think it's really sort of overlooked the Osprey brand because you got tons of nib options. They even have architects and cursives and I can't remember if it's zoom or music nibs or even some of the both that they have as well. So that's really great with the one pen many nibs options that you can do with some offering from Ospreys. Um, between the Noodlers and the Fountain Pen Revolution, I, I sort of just like this one a bit more just dimensionally. It fits my hand a little bit more. I like the untip nib option too. So I know some people really enjoy the Fountain Pen Revolution uh, pens and their nibs. I think they're great. But if I was to pick between those two, I'd go for a Noodlers. But this pen here, if I was budget conscious getting something from Osprey, I think they got a really well made pen it works great and be able to swap out different nibs and like tons of options i think they have probably have the most nib options of, of anyone i've seen um definitely check them out thanks for watching we'd love to hear from you below in the comments hit subscribe and like if you haven't done so already and we'll leave it at there keep on flexing we'll catch you next time